Hi, I'm Logan Mercer. I'm the Director of Engineering here at Polyswarm. Today, I'm going to be going over the command line interface and some of the free features that we include with the Community API key. So to get started, you need to go to the polyswarm.network and get your API key. Next, just install Polyswarm through pip and you're ready to go. So, through the command line, you can do anything that you could do over the web UI or by our Python API. In this video, I'm going to be showing you scanning a file, retrieving a file by its hash, and performing some metadata searches, so finding other samples in Polyswarm using metadata features that we extract from files. I'm going to begin by uploading a file that I've created myself. This was PuTTY, the Windows executable for SSHing. I used Metasploit's MS Venom to make this a Trojan. So what's happening is this file has been sent out on the Polyswarm network to all of our microengine providers. Each of these are security experts that have joined the Polyswarm network and have written antivirus software encoded in what we call a microengine. These microengines are receiving the file and scanning it to determine if they believe it's malicious or benign. If the provider has confidence on the file and wants to give a response, they'll do so. Providers don't need to give a response in Polyswarm, so you only respond when you're confident. Like I discussed in my previous video, there is a bidding process in Polyswarm where you encode your confidence in a bid value. So, looks like it's done. The first thing that you can see is the SHA-256 of the file. We use this to identify it. Next, you can see how many engines analyzed a file and how many reported it as malicious or benign. 15 of our security providers chose to participate in this bounty, and 10 of them found it to be malicious. The engines that participate are listed here, so from Shihu 360 down to Dr. Webb. Anything in red means that they were reporting as malicious, and anything in green, of course, says that it's clean. When an engine responds that it's malicious, they return not just that it's malicious, but also a little bit more information. Here you can see the malware family that these engines believe the file belongs to. They don't have to report malware family, but they can if they choose to. Next, we have some information about each scanner. So the environment that it's running in, the architecture and operating system that the scanner is running in, and if we have it, the software version and version information. Scrolling down, there are two more things that we deliver in a Polyswarm scan. We give you a scan permalink. This you could throw into any browser, and it would bring you up to the scan results page that we previously viewed in my last video. Next, you can see Polyscore. Polyscore is a number from 0 to 1 that we generate for each file. It takes into consideration our understanding of each of the engine's performances over time, and it generates a single number that you can use in order to make a determination on the file. So if you have an automated process or you're not familiar with some of the security partners and you don't know how to treat a sample, you can just use the poly score. Higher number means it's more likely to be malicious. Next, I'm going to show you one way to search for a specific artifact in Polyswarm. I'm going to copy the hash from the previous file and run Polyswarm search hash and paste it in. Now, there are a couple format outputs in Polyswarm. You can search for something by, in the human readable output, which I used in the previous command. We also allow you to request the format as a JSON object. This will provide the entire JSON object for, that you get back from the command. I'm going to pipe it into JQ to make it a little more pretty, and let's run it. This is the output you get. I'm going to scroll up to the top. So from the top, when you search for a hash in Polyswarm, you return the most recent instance of scanning that file. The very first thing that you'll see here is the responses from all of the microengines. The first one here is Tachyon. So Tachyon responded with the verdict false, which means they do not believe that the file is malicious. You can see their author, which is their Ethereum public key to uniquely identify them in Polyswarm. Next is the much more human-readable author name, followed by bid. Bid is their confidence score encoded in some amount of nectar that they're using to assert in Polyswarm. Underneath that is engine information, which they can edit themselves on polyswarm.network. 
Underneath that, we have metadata provided by the micro engine. So first is malware family, which is blank here because Tachyon doesn't believe this is a virus, followed by scanner information, which is information about the engine itself. So this engine provided by Tachyon is running on Windows environment, and we can see the vendor version information here. Underneath that is a response from Chihu360. You can see their bid value is a little higher than Tachyon's was because they have more confidence in this particular assertion. And their verdict is true, meaning they do believe this file is malicious. This file is actually malicious. So after our arbitration period, Chihu is going to be paid out proportionate to how many tokens they put in, while Tachyon above is going to lose those tokens that they asserted because they provided an incorrect assertion. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down past all of the uh, engine responses for this file. Underneath the assertions, you can see some information about this particular bounty. First is the bounty status. This sample was submitted by me just a few minutes ago, and so it's still awaiting the arbitration process, where our arbiters will decide who was truly correct or incorrect, and will distribute tokens accordingly. Under that, you can see the file name, the hash of the file, and some other unique identifying information within Polyswarm. We also provide information like the community this was submitted to. At the moment, Lima is the default public community. This was submitted from Puerto Rico, where I am right now. Uh, this is the name of the file, some other specific information, the time that it was submitted, so just a few minutes ago. Underneath that, we have artifact metadata. Artifact metadata is information that we extract from the file while it is being sent to all of our micro engines. So at the moment, the information here comes only from Polyswarm not from our security partners. All of the information that we present here, we have made searchable. I'll show that next, but it's possible to search for specific samples in Polyswarm using the bits of information that we're going to present to you here. First, we show different hashes that represent the file. We extract the basics, like MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, some of the SHA-3s, and SHA-512. We also show you AuthentiHash, SSDeep, and TLSH. It's important that all of these hashes are searchable in Polyswarm, so you can use the fuzzy hashes like SSD or TLSH in order to search for related files in Polyswarm. Next, there are a couple tools that we run against each sample, depending on its file type, and you can see output of those here. So against this Windows executable, we run leaf, which gives you uh, some important pieces of information like imported functions, imported libraries. Uh, we also run PE file against the file, which provides imported functions and libraries like Leaf does, but also provides the import hash of the file. You could use that to search for related files in the Polyswarm database. Scrolling further down, you can see some more output from PE file. For this sample, underneath the PE file and Leaf outputs, we also have scan information, which is from Polyswarm. So we have information on what countries we've seen this file from, Puerto Rico and the US, as well as uh, file names that we've seen it go by, and we also have information about the first time and the most recent time this file was scanned. I'll scroll through this because we've just seen it, but this is information about the most recent time that this file was scanned. So input from all of the micro engines and their assertions. This information is searchable using these fields in a Polyswarm metadata search, and I can show examples of that later. Lastly, we run the strings tool against the file, which shows the domain, IP, and URL-like strings seen in this sample. So this modified version of PuTTY contains the following domain-like strings, IP-like strings, and URL-like strings. Next, I'm going to show an example of searching for files by metadata in Polyswarm. I've prepared an example that's searching for examples of WannaCry in Polyswarm. This query here is performing a metadata search. It's using the strings tool, looking for any domain-like string that ends in the WannaCry kill switch. A non-exhaustive list of the search terms available in Polyswarm can be found on our documentation. Anything that you see in the metadata of a file in Polyswarm is searchable. The next free feature to show is a metadata search in Polyswarm. Metadata searches allow you to look for samples of files that we have within our data asset using the metadata features that we extracted above. I'm going to show an example searching for instances of Loki InfoStealer in our data asset. Like with scans and hash searches, you can request the data output in a variety of formats. I'm going to begin by searching for the human readable format, and I'll show another one in a second. In here, we see the output from my metadata search. Each of these 
are artifact instances in Polyswarm. So these are concise pieces of information about a single file. We begin in blue with their SHA-256, followed by their file type information. So this one is an executable. We have some basic hashes on the file, some information about where we've seen it from, as well as, again, a permalink to the scan. So you could copy and paste this into a browser to go on our web UI and see the scan results as well as file information. You don't need to be logged in to do this, so you can post this anywhere to share a scan result with someone else. Then you see detections. So nine of the 13 engines that chose to scan this sample found it to be malicious. And you can see the poly score. Poly score is going to change for each file. It just takes into account all of the engines that scanned it and their reputation. The next type of output you could request in Polyswarm is format SHA-256. All this does is it'll give you a list of all of the SHA-256 hashes associated with each of the files that your search result finds. This is useful because you can take this list and pipe it into a subsequent command. So for example, you could search for all of the SHA-256s of samples that we have that contain Loki, and then put that into rescan in order to get the most recent scan information on those samples. That would look like this. So this is going to take all of the SHA-256s that I just gathered and then submit them for rescanning. Like before, you also can request the output from a metadata search as a JSON object. Because of the number of samples here, it's really challenging to read. Um, but if you're doing anything programmatically, you can request the JSON output and then parse through it there. That JSON output will contain not just the metadata for each sample that you're searching on, but also the scan results from the most recent scan for each sample. So populating on the screen are scan results from uploading all of those hashes to Polyswarm and requesting a rescan. This is a great command for requesting the most recent scan information about a metadata search that you've run, because some of those samples may not have been scanned for a while. All right, those are the free features that I have to show off for you today. Look for a new video coming out from me soon that covers the paid features in Polyswarm, including our Yara-based hunting on the command line. Remember to get started, you need to go to polyswarm.network, create an account, and get your API key. You can also find our documentation on docs.polyswarm.io. Thanks.